Hi everyone, it is so good that you're with us again. Uh, in a moment we're going to worship the Lord and then we'll be hearing God's word from Pastor Hugh. But first just a few things uh, just to keep us up to date. Um, if you remember to get in touch, please get in touch if there's anything that we can be helping you with. If you need prayer, if you need contact, um, if, if there's anything please don't stay quiet but get in touch with myself or Pastor Hugh or one of the rest of the team. We also want you guys to stay in touch um, so make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms and um, we still have our WhatsApp group going so if you're not um, in that please contact us and we'll get you in that. Um, and also a few of you have been asking how to give so um, if you want to know more about that um, please get in touch with us. Brilliant. Um, also, we, as many of you know, we've got our devotionals. They're on every day and they're continuing this week, um, spring into Psalms. And we've just loved journeying through the Psalms. So uh, we'd encourage you to keep up with that and we'd encourage you to be signing in at some stage throughout the day. And don't be afraid to leave a comment. Don't be afraid to engage or to interact as we say also with the service today, don't be afraid to put a wee hand up or a thumbs up or say hello to the rest of the church family. Before we come to worship, we're going to pray and then we're going to lift up God's name. We're going to worship him um, and we're going to celebrate him. So let's, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We lift up your name, O oh God, because... Lord, no matter what else is going on in the world, that we know that you're bigger, you're stronger, you're greater, you're above it all. And so we worship you, we adore you, we magnify you. Father, we pray that your presence would fill every living room, bedroom, office, study, dining room, wherever it is that people are viewing this service and engaging and being part of Coastlands Church today. Father, we pray that you would fill that space and that place with your presence, with your goodness and with your love in Jesus' mighty name. And come on, all of God's people said... Amen. <laughs> and everybody said it again, come on. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Good morning, everyone. You're so welcome to worship today. Join in with us as we start with Our God is Greater. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
we raise a hallelujah, we say that you alone are worthy. You're the source of life. Amen. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. into this stream right now, but there's just such a leading to sing this old chorus. It's old, but it's new. So it's maybe the first time you've sang it, or maybe the hundredth time that you've sang it. But right now where you are, would you know the presence of God, the love of God just rushing towards you afresh right now? Let's sing it out. All the kids, all the youth, all the elders amongst us, you sing it out. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong.
right now in this last minute, just begin to pray in your homes. Just pray that the Father would move, that the Spirit would come afresh and just move with power over our homes, over our churches. John chapter 14 verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Good morning, Coastlands. It's great that we're still doing online church. We really do love you and miss you. And I've been thinking of that Mizpah verse in Genesis chapter 31 and verse 49 all week. The Lord keep us while we are apart this way. And that's been my prayer for you this week and my prayer for us. Do stay connected through the morning devotions. Stay connected through the uh, WhatsApp groups and everything we're trying to do to keep the Coastlands family connected at this time. We're continuing on our series, The I Am's of Jesus and the Gospel of John this morning. We're going to pray and then get straight into God's Word. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you that you're interested in each of us and thank you that you do keep us while we're apart from one another. So Father, I do pray your blessing upon us as church this morning, your blessing upon your people day by day. Father, that you would watch over us and that you would keep us while we're apart this way. In Jesus' name, amen. In the passage that Amy read for us uh, just a little earlier, we had the question of Thomas to Jesus. It was almost an interruption to Jesus. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And I suppose that highlights that, that, that humanness of us, that desire, that need to always know where we're going, to always not only know where we're going, but to know the way that we're going to get there. Satnav, of course, GPS has changed all of that. Nowadays, we not only know the way that we're going, we know the route, we know that it's toll free, that it's motorway free, that it's gluten free. We know everything about the route. We know the, the quickest way to go. We most know the most economical way to go. We know exactly how many miles. We know exactly how many minutes there isn't much we don't know about journeying today and going on trips. I suppose maybe that helps men, especially, and the, the male ego that doesn't like to know on those family journeys, the directions and the way that we're going. I read a story recently about three men. They were hiking through a, a, a massive forest and they came to a really large river, a really large and, and, and violent river, and they needed to continue their hike to get across this river. So the three of them are standing at the edge of the river, not knowing what to do when one of the men falls to the ground on his knees and cries, Oh Lord, would you please help us, help me get across this river? Would you give me strength to get across the river, Lord? instantly boom these arms and legs like steel and he's able to swim across the river even though he nearly drowned twice he gets across the river the first man having seen the response of his friend falls to his knees and cried oh lord 
Would you give me strength to get across the river and give me the tools to get across the river? Instantly, boom, arms, legs, legs, and arms and legs like steel and a rowing boat besides. And he's able within an hour, although he up nearly capsized, he gets across the river. The third guy, having witnessed everything, falls to his knees and said, Oh Lord, would you give me strength to get across the river? But also give me the tools and give me the wisdom, Lord. Instantly, he's turned into a woman. A woman who checks the map, hikes a hundred yards up the, up the side of the river and crosses on an enormous bridge. There's another one for our, our, our ego man. Thomas. Thomas is a much more formidable character than what his nickname in scripture seems to describe. Doubting Thomas. He doubted a couple of times and he was left with that name it seems for, for, the, for the rest of his life. Certainly for what we know about him. But maybe... Maybe Thomas was just actually the most honest of the disciples. You see, when Thomas didn't understand, he didn't pretend that he did. I can just picture him when we read the text saying to Jesus, Whoa, stop, Lord. I, I, I don't get it. You're talking in riddles again. Don't talk to me in riddles, Lord. Help me. Help, help me, Lord. And I think in his vulnerability... Jesus' response, as Jesus always responds to vulnerable bit of vulnerability, not as always expecting us to understand, but helping us in our, our lack of understanding. You see, Jesus doesn't always expect us to understand. He expects us to trust him, to believe in him, and to trust him for the journey. You see, Jesus throughout this discussion, a discussion that began and still takes place at the Passover table. They haven't left the upper room. They haven't moved from the table where they had the Passover meal and where Jesus instituted what we know as the Lord's Supper. Jesus started a conversation with them, telling them that he was going to go away, that he was going to the cross. And so they're confused. They're confused because they don't know how Jesus dying is going to change everything. They don't realise that Jesus going away is the best thing that could ever happen. Jesus going to the cross is about to open up a whole new world for his disciples, but also for us. And so Jesus says this, you trust in God, trust also in me. You see, what Jesus has been saying is a stretch for their earthly minds. Thomas is still thinking from the earth up. Thomas is still thinking geographically. Thomas is still thinking directionally, physically. But Jesus is thinking completely differently. Jesus is thinking eternally. He's thinking redemptively. And he's thinking spiritually. But Jesus is about to move their thinking. When Jesus talks about being the way and and the truth and the life, what he means is this, that his journey to the cross and the resurrection is about to open a door to the presence of God in a way that his followers up to that time would never have countenanced. Let me, before we get into Jesus being the way, speak firstly about how Jesus is the truth. Let me put it this way. And this is the first thing I want us to try and grasp today. Jesus is the way to God's truth. The Gospel writer John, who we're reading from at this moment in time, in chapter 1 and verse 18 says this, that no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and in the closest relationship with the Father, he has made him known, or he has revealed him to us. We need a 
a, a new picture of God. The disciples needed a new picture of God. We have so many wrong pictures of God in, in, in our world today. From this sentimental weakling to this austere headmaster. I love that I get to be able to say that Jesus calls me his friend. But he's not my mate. And these are some of the, the wrong pictures and, and the sentiment. The sentimentalizing of God, I nearly got that out there. The sentimentalizing of God and, and some of the pictures that we have today. We need a better picture of God. And Jesus saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He is the revealer of God. Everything that the disciples knew about God, they knew it through the law. They knew it through the sacrifices. They knew it through the temple, the symbols and, and, and the shadows. Uh, but what Jesus is saying is I'm not a representation. I am not a shadow. I am not a symbol of God. I, I am God and I reveal the very nature of God. Not just the heart of God, but the very nature of God. Jesus shows us through his miracles of compassion, through his forgiveness of sinners, what God is really, really like. And we need to grasp that picture of God again. Maybe for some of us, we need that picture of God for the first time. That God is awesome. That God is mighty. That God is, that God is almighty. And yet, he speaks into our troubled hearts. He is gentle with us. And even when we don't understand, he leads us to trusting him. He leads us to believing in him. And this is what Jesus is doing with these disciples in John's Gospel, chapter 14. Jesus begins to speak of the Father's house. Let me put it this way. Second thing I want to say today is Jesus is the way to God's house. He begins to put hope in the hearts of his troubled disciples. In their world, the earthly house of God was the temple. And they never got to go into all of the rooms in the temple. Many of the rooms, only, only the priests got to go into some rooms. And in the, the most holy room, the, the best room in, in the whole of the temple, only the high priest and only, only once a year on a certain day could anyone enter into that room. I remember growing up and my, my mum's mum, my gran, had a good room. Um, she had a parlour house and, and, and children, we were never, as children, we were never, seen, it seemed, ever allowed into that good room. The good room was, it seemed to be being kept for, for adults. It didn't give me, uh, it didn't give me anything that I didn't like my granny for or anything. It was just one of those things. Children weren't allowed in, 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 in the good room. All God's children are allowed in his best room. All God's children, Jesus says, there's a place in heaven. And this is actually what Jesus is trying to describe to the disciples in, in this moment. If I go to prepare a place for you, and Jesus is speaking of the many rooms and the house of God, the eternal house of God, which, which is heaven. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and I will take you to be where I am. You see, not only should that put hope in the hearts of Jesus' disciples all those thousands of years ago, but that should put hope in, in our hearts also. That should put hope in our hearts in this way, that we learn to live out of the abundance of the life that God has for us in the future. That we learn to live out of that abundance right now. They needed a revelation of heaven. Jesus was going to build a place for them. He was going to come again to receive them, to be with him forever, for all of eternity. And it is exactly the same for us. One of the secrets of us being able to live in the vulnerable human condition that we live with 
is a revelation of heaven. That we live with a view of heaven. A, a balanced view of how heaven affects us in the future and how heaven affects us now. You see, in a world where we are pilgrims, in a world that we are passing through, we need to keep an eye on heaven. We need to keep an eye on the return of Jesus as well because that is hope for our hearts and whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. We need to think eternally again. We need to think about heaven again. We used to think about heaven. We used to talk about heaven all the time. We used to talk about how heaven affected the way that we live on earth. It was a massive part of what God was doing in our lives. A massive part of the great thing that God is doing in our lives. But we don't talk as much about it. I think it's because in the world that we live in now, it's, it's instant. Unless everything satisfies or gratifies us instantly, we don't seem to have the same interest in it. But maybe especially us, church, we need to think eternally again. We need to think about heaven again. We need to think not only about God today, but what God is doing with us and for us in the future. And that doesn't detract detract in any way from what God is doing in our lives now, for what God is doing in his church now, for what God is doing in and through his church in, in, in these days. Because Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. We've seen how Jesus is the way to God's truth. We've seen how Jesus is the way to God's house. But Jesus is also the way to life with God now. Jesus is the way to God's life now. I, I, I love this quote from the great Baptist preacher, Charles Spurgeon. He says this, that little faith will take your soul to heaven. But great faith will bring heaven to your soul. I love the idea of that. Not only that one day that we will go to heaven to be with God in our Father's house, to be there for all eternity, but that God wants to be part of our life on earth. That our soul can be filled with heaven even now. Here's a quote from Jesus. John's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 24. I speak to you in eternal truth. If you embrace my message and believe in the one who sent me, you will never face condemnation for in me you have already passed from the realm of death into the realm of eternal life. We have moved in Jesus from the realm of death that this world brings and, and sin in this world brings to the realm of eternal life in Jesus. I heard this brilliant phrase recently ab about sin. It said, sin doesn't make you bad, it makes you dead. That's the biggest problem with sin. That, I suppose maybe why I love testimonies of kids who grew up in church and even though they grew up in church and surrounded by all of the Christian stuff, they knew they were dead enough to need Jesus themselves. You see, what that teaches me is we don't need to be an addict or an axe murderer to need Jesus. But in our life to move from death to life, we need to know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You see, here's what this means. Jesus gives life. Stuff that, that we get connected to. Stuff that we enjoy relationships. The highs, the positions of life, the possessions of life. All of that stuff can actually be killing us in the inside. And what I mean by that is when the satisfaction or gratification of that runs out, we are left with dearth. We can even be left with a sense of, of death. And I don't mean physically. I mean emotionally. 
I mean especially spiritually. I mean eternally. Why would I say that in church? Why would I say that to church? Because I need to keep checking day by day whether I'm living in the realm of life or whether I'm living in the realm of death. And what Jesus says is this, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus means that without him, in every area of my life, I am dead. But with him, he gives me life. Life that heals, life that empowers. He comes. And in every area of my life, where he comes, he gives me life. He gives me wholeness. Through relationship with Jesus, I receive wholeness. Jesus living with me. Jesus living in me. He gives us life that has an eternal quality. And I don't just mean in length of time, but in quality of life. Here's what Jesus' follower Peter said later on, everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God, he has already deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. As a result of this, he has given us magnificent promises. Promises that are beyond all price. So that the power of these tremendous promises and the experience of partnership will give us his divine nature. For as you know him better, he will give you through his great power Everything you need for living a good life. This is what Jesus is saying when he says, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. And Jesus is still the way. Let me deal with one thing very, very quickly. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life, no one can come to the Father except through me. It almost sounds as if Jesus is saying there's only one way to God. This seems like a, such an audacious thing for Jesus to say. But, but if we consider the phrase in, in the original Greek language, and we actually consider the phrase in the context of the passage we're reading, and the wider context of Scripture, here's actually what we learn that Jesus is saying. That he is absolutely the only way to God. One way God said to get to heaven and Jesus is the only way. And Jesus is still the way. You see, what Jesus is saying in this, I'm going to open up the way to God's dwelling place. Jesus dying and raising from the dead on behalf of sinful, broken humanity is preparing a place for us in heaven. But here's what else Jesus is doing. Jesus is repairing the disunity between heaven and earth. Jesus is our trailblazer. There's an amazing little portion of scripture in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 20 that says, this hope we have is an anchor for the soul that cannot slip and that cannot break down under whatever pressure it bears upon it, is a safe and steadfast hope that enters within the heavenly temple in which the very presence of God dwells, where Jesus has entered in advance as a forerunner for us. Forerunner. The Greek word there is, is, is protomos. If you've ever been on a cruise or been on a big ship or you've ever been up the Belfast Channel, if you've ever been somewhere where shipping has little boats that are called pilots and they come out and they help the larger vessels come up safely 
through a channel which may have such a narrow way for big ships like Belfast Harbour to get up. And those little boats are, 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 are protomos. That's exactly what Jesus did for us. He went ahead of us as our pilot. He makes sure the way is safe all the way to God. A derivation of that word is protomoi. And I'm sure you've seen battle scenes where the lancers first off into the battle and they clear the way for the rest of the troops to come safely into the battle. That's what Jesus does for us. Jesus has gone ahead to clear the way to heaven, to clear the way to God, to reunite heaven with earth through his living within us, through us trusting him, and receiving him, Jesus is the way to God's house. Jesus reveals the truth about God. And Jesus connects us to the life of God. Let's pray. Father, help us today. Help us to connect to the, the life of heaven. Help us to connect to the life of heaven through Jesus. Thank you that you sent Jesus, your son. But thank you, Jesus, that you died and you rose again. And that you went to make a way for us in heaven. Father, help us to live. Help us to learn through the abundance of what you've done for us. That we get one day to go to heaven. Father, help us to live in view of that every day of our lives. But Father, thank you. Thank you that heaven also comes into our souls through Jesus, who is the life of God. So Father, help us day by day to move from the realm of death to the realm of life through Jesus, your Son. Father, that we every day would say that Jesus is the I am. He's the way to God. He is the truth of God. He is the life of God. And that we would receive that into ourselves day by day. Help us to trust him. Help us to believe in him. And help us to worship him. Let's worship God together right now. You are the way the truth, and the life. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, All my 
fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay long When I am here with you If you are the way The truth The life I believe in you are The way The truth Cause it's a new horizon And I'm set on you And you meet me here today Mercies that I knew All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they won't stay long I believe you are The way The truth Well, thank you so much for joining with us today. We pray and hope that you've been blessed through the worship, through the word and through God's presence as he permeates um, everything that we do because we do it for him and for his glory. Um, our prayer is for you, our Coastlands family, that you would continue to know God's protection, his help and his, his, his presence from day to day. And our prayer as well is for those of you who aren't part of the Coastlands family, maybe you're not even um, going to church or part of a church, uh, or maybe you've never even given your life to Jesus, and our prayer is that you would get connected that you would get connected to Jesus and that you would get connected to his church and that you would find the life that Pastor Hugh has been talking about. So we're going to close in prayer um, and, and, and yeah, we're going to close in prayer. So let's do that right now. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for everything that you are. And we thank you today for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. We thank you that Jesus is God's way to life that he is God's way to, to, to your house, to the Father's house, that he's God's way. And so, Lord, we just pray that we would follow him and walk with him and live life with Jesus, we pray. Lord, we pray for those of us who already know you, would you help us to, to hold on close to you and to walk by your side day by day. And Lord, again, we pray for those who may not know you and have never made a, a commitment to follow you. Father, we pray that even having watched this today, that you would reach into their hearts and reach into their lives, that they would recognize today that you're real and that you truly are the way to life, that you are the way to God's house, that you are the way to the God life. So Lord, I pray, would you bless us, be with us and continue with us in Jesus' name for the rest of today and the week that's in front of us in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Come on, you know we usually do this, and come on, we all said Amen. God bless you.